When he said that, he said, not only would I beat you, but the bus would help me to beat you as well. <laughs> Everyone on the bus, hallelujah. And God is my witness, the boy did not say nothing. And that must have been the Holy Spirit, because I know how these young boys get. Mm. Hallelujah. They get mouthy, amen. Yeah. Now, so th this boy was like startled. My dad took the camera back. He sat back down, didn't it? And then, and then the, he pressed the emergency button, and then he came off the bus. So when they all came off the bus, it was like on the motorway type of thing where the bus goes, they all came off, came off, came off, 10 of them. And then the bus driver was kissed his teeth and he continued driving. Now, this is where my life changed. My dad gave me a look as if, did I really give birth to you? That's the look he gave me, but I don't know if he meant it. Hallelujah. But that's what changed everything. He gave me a look as if, did you just get robbed for a 2,000 pound camera on this bus and I was on it? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the look he gave me. Amen. And let me just open a bracket. I was upset because there was people upstairs. They watched me get on. Everything. Everything. The, the police officer could even say, Matt shot me in the head yesterday. She would be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she believed everything. So he's, he's, saying, he's saying, yeah, look, he's involved in gang, the worst gang. And I'm sitting there like, yes, we're making our name, finally. And my mom's there like, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> And in my head, I'm thinking, in my head, I'm thinking, this is it now. We're making our name. This is how it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. Not knowing that I was possessed again. Hallelujah. So because because I, I like I, at the time because I, I hated the police so much, but obviously they were doing their jobs. I like I like to read books of people, lawyers that you know know a lot about. Um, you know, the police and how the police can maltreat people and stuff like that. So I read a book that told me that, you know, gave me insight on what the police can and can't do. So the policeman was saying, oh, I need to go upstairs and search your room. And I was like, you can't do that without a warrant. And he was really shocked that I, I even knew that. Because normally, as a black person, once they say something like that, you're intimidated. And you just allow them in. Yeah, yeah, go upstairs in my room. My passport is even on top of the wardrobe. So I have that as well. Hallelujah. That's how black people are. You, you, but if you educate yourself, you know how to carry yourself when it comes to police officers. Now, it's the same thing with demons and devils. If you are educated with the word of God, they cannot vandalize you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So the same way you need to know the laws of the Bible in order for you to prosper in the things of God. Yes. Prosperity starts in the spirit and finishes in the flesh. Yes. Yes. Now, all these things I was doing was preparing me again for what? For business. Because I went through depression, I went through stress, I went through all different types of things. Selling a hard amount of cocaine, cocaine. and, and my, my, the people I was looking up to were all the guys that were buying penthouses. Does everybody know what a penthouse is? Or buying penthouses, literally buying, I'm not talking about mortgage, they weren't borrowing money from anyone. They cash just here in a box like this, boom. Hallelujah. Now, what I done was, I had money in my shoeboxes, a lot of shoeboxes under my bed. Only one of my 11 brothers knew where all my money was. And it was the young one, hallelujah. Because you know how they are, hide and seek. You want to play hide and seek in my room? Under my bed, hallelujah. Where my money is. So he found it, hallelujah. Playing hide and seek. And he came to me one time, and I was just coming out of the bathroom with just the towel. He said, You have to find money. I said, Go back upstairs and put that away when you found it. Hallelujah. So I told him, Listen, keep it to yourself. So that same day, that same brother, when I came home in my room, I saw him, he drew a picture and he left it on my wardrobe. And it was me. With a bandana, I'm not going to say the colour again to be wise. And him as well, he was wearing the bandana at the age of fucking nine. Hallelujah. He drew a picture of me and him together with two guns with bandana. I said, David, come here now. <laughs> and he came up and said, that day I beat him badly. Hallelujah. And I said, I don't want to see you do things like this again. Because I knew I was teaching him subconsciously. Mm. Hallelujah. He would see me doing certain things and he would want to do the same thing. So I beat him that day and I thank God I do because some of you are probably thinking, why would you do that? What's wrong with you? I, I'm happy I did it even now because it taught him a lesson. Now he remembers the beat that I gave him every time he wants to get involved. <laughs> Hallelujah. He knows, look, look where I got Max. I'm not, I'm not doing the same thing. Hallelujah. And um, um, my older brother also knew about the lifestyle of him. I said, not because I told him, but because other people would come and tell him. Hallelujah. But he did me a favour and he didn't tell my parents. Now, to shorten the story to, to the end of it, um, this is how I gave my life to Christ. My dad forced me to get baptised. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He forced me to get baptised. And, and imagine the area we got baptised in is the area that I had the most problems with. So he forced me that day. And I was telling him, Dad, I can't be in this area. He forced me and said, you'll get baptised and we get back to in your clothes, in your true, true, true religion, whatever you call it, you get baptized in all your clothes. So he forced me. I got baptized that day. And tell me about him, amen. This is him. I swear this guy's dad's a pastor, amen. Mm. Now, he mentioned my little brother. My little brother said to me, Yeah, um, you know that guy? He mentioned a YouTube song, and he said, Yeah, that guy there, he pointed him out. We're watching the video. And I'm telling you, seeing him stand here, if you watch that video, you'll know that God does miracles. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, honestly, I'm being honest. If you, you, you see a man doing Timothy's video him now, if you take that video now and go to YouTube before, you wouldn't believe it's the same guy. Amen. Yes. So he told me this guy is right in the church. And I was like, he invited me to church. He said, yeah. Now when I came to church for the first time, I saw him. You know, he was playing the drums, and when he came off his aura, I couldn't believe it was the same guy. Amen. Mm. Now he came to my house because, as I told you before, we, we got close. Now my brother on my dad's side saw him and said, you know, I preached my brother so much times when I gave my life to Christ. You know you have that fire when you first give your life to Christ. You mm -hmm. preach everyone around you. Mm -hmm. My brother did not want to come to church. He said to me, you know what? I saw Max before and I'm seeing him now. So this Jesus you keep talking about must be real, so I'm going to come to church. Amen. Amen. And he came. Amen. Amen. So I've seen God do miracles in his life. And I hope you were blessed by the testimony. Amen. And there's more you believe in here. Okay, now we're about to hear a song from a brother that's also from my church. I'm also blessed by his songs. Amen. And I know you'll be blessed by the spirit God's given him and the ministry God's given him. Let's welcome Evangelist Francis. Let's clap up.
John chapter 5. If you don't have a Bible, just share with the person that is next to you. I know some of us like having Bibles on our phone. I give you permission as a one-off to turn your phone on and go to John chapter 5. But when the text message reads... Multitude should have sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the who had infirmity 38 years. And immediately the man was made well. Amen. Took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I want to speak about a quick exhortation on the pool of Bethesda. In the pool of Bethesda, I really want us to imagine this scenario. The Bible says this. The Bible says that in this place in Bethesda, there was a pool and there were five porches. It means there was a pool right there and there was almost five different, you can call it huts or rows. And in those five different rows or huts, there were sick people, there were lame, there were the blind, people with many diseases, people who had cancer, people who had HIV, people who even have depression, people who had depression and oppression, oppressed by the enemy, by the certain things that they do. Whether it's fornicating, whether it's drugs, people who, had, who were alcoholic, all of them were lined up in that pool and they were waiting for the stirring of the water. Now listen to the supernatural manifestation. The Bible says this, the Bible says that every so often, and God will command his angel and the angel will descend. And when the angel descends, he will stir up the water. So imagine you are moving the water by the water with the hands of the angel, moving it. And when the water was moved and stirred, then the first person that jumped into that water was him. Amen. Amen. This is the scenario that we are reading. This is the story that God has given me today to exhort one another with. The manifestation of God was shown in the stirring of the water. Now firstly, before we go on, you need to know certain things. Bethesda in Hebrew means the house of mercy. Amen. Bethesda was the house of mercy. God's mercy was revealed in the stirring of water. We serve a God when the Bible says that He's slow to anger, but He's rich in mercy. Amen. We serve a God who is a God of compassion. The God who is moved when people are in trouble, are in circumstances. Our God is a merciful God. Amen. You see, I can do something to you today that will get you so angry that you will do something to me. But God is moved because our God is a God of mercy. He's slow to anger. He looks at your situation. He looks at what you are going through. The things that you're not able to give up. And God is moved. He's compassionate. God is a God of mercy. And he, Bethesda, means the house of mercy. So these people came to a house and they were seeking for mercy for all their problems, for all their situations, for all their ways that they have been going, for their rebellion. They were saying, God, you are God of mercy. Help me. God, save me. Change my ways. Regardless of what you are going through in your life, you need to know that God has not abandoned you. That's right. The Bible says that God will never abandon you, nor leave you. Amen. Amen. Look, we can be walking, me and you, in the streets, and I see 10 people coming our way with knife and gun. You look, bro, she go, I'm gone. <laughs> But the God that we serve will never leave you, nor abandon you. Amen. Amen. Am I speaking to someone? Yes, sir. The God that we serve is a merciful God. He says, even in your times of tribulation, I am there with you. In Psalm 23, he says, though you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil, because God is with me. Amen. That God will never abandon you. God is taking us from grace to grace. The house of mercy, because the word of God is being preached, and people are changing their lives. There are some of us here, there's already in the spirit realm, 
something is really beginning to happen. There's a transformation that is happening in your life. And you are believing in that change. And what will happen in the spirit will manifest itself in the physical realm. Hallelujah. Only if you believe. Amen. And there are still some of us here that are doubting. Right. There are some of us that are still waiting and saying, when is this going to finish? Mm. But it's going to finish when you give your life to Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because God today is here for you. The God that we are serving is a God of mercy. Now the Bible says this. Let's go back to our story. It says, when the water was stirred, the first one to jump was him. Amen. What does this teach us? It tells us, firstly, that salvation is individual. Salvation does not depend on your parents. Salvation does not depend on your wife or your husband. Or your brethren that you pop up and down with. You see, when you go into the throne of judgment, it's not going to be you and your friends. It's going to be you before the law of law. And you need to give account for every word, for every thought, for everything that you have ever did. God will ask you a question. And you have no ground to say, it was my friend that brought me to that place. It is you and God before the throne of grace. Amen. Salvation is individual. Yeah. There are some people that wait for their mother to be born again. And they say, yeah, but my mother goes to church. But look how she treats my dad. Don't worry about that. You give your life to Christ. Because salvation is individual. Amen. On the day of judgment, you will give account yourself. Amen. I have my fiance here and I say to her, I say, look. Um, marriage is secondary. What purpose is it for us to get married and for both of us to find ourselves in hell? There is no purpose. Amen. The reason why God brings you together is to serve Him. Marriage, children, is a bonus. Amen. Amen. The first thing is serving God. And this is what we are here doing. Amen. Salvation is individual. The Bible says in the book of Acts 4.12 There is no other name that has been given unto men of which we can be saved. Now that name is not Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. That name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that his name is Emmanuel. God in me. So when I'm watching, you think to myself. You can only give what you have. Amen. And beloved, I stand before you, I have nothing. But I have a name that is in me that I want to give you. And that name is Jesus. I give you Jesus. I present to you Jesus. I speak to you Jesus. I show you Jesus. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. No one enters the kingdom except through Jesus. Come on, give the Lord praise.
Now, for what purpose? What purpose is it for me to gain everything? You see, the water was being stirred that day. But let me tell you a reality. Today, Satan is also stirring his water. Ah, ah, ah. What is the stirring or the pool of Satan? It's fornication. Satan stirs it. You see fornication in John. Should I go there? That's when it happens. 
what does this teach us? You see, you can say grace, grace, grace. But the grace of God has an end. Be careful. You see, one of the most touching verses that always touches my heart, even to the very bone, is Isaiah 55 verse 6. It says, Seek the Lord while at least he may be found. Call upon him while at least he is near. It means there will come a time when you look for Jesus. Where are you? And it's over. He's not there. Hallelujah. When you are breathing, you still have life. When you are alive, you have the chance to repent. You have the opportunity today to make a decision and say, I leave behind my ways. I choose to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Because after that, after death, you can't say, God, take me back. I want to repent. It's too late. Hallelujah. It's too late. The grace of God has its limits. You see, God watches you. It's like change. You just there. You think, ah, YOLO. I have time. Hallelujah. You don't know what tomorrow awaits you. That is why we preach the gospel of the Lord today. That's why the man of God was saying that you are blessed. Why? Because God is impartating to you a word of wisdom. And it's up to you to catch it and seize it. Put it to practice and see your life be changed. The grace of God has its limits. Do not be stubborn. I met a brother one day. He said to me, Brother Shiko, I'm not ready to get baptized. He gave his life to Christ six months before. And then he came to me and he said, Brother Shiko, I'm not ready to get baptized because I'm not ready to give up all these things yet. I said, Brother, baptism is a confirmation of the decision that you took to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if you're still telling me you're not ready to get baptized because you still got to leave these things behind, you're not born again. Go back. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to go backwards. We need to examine ourselves. Did I really change? The Bible says that you will know them by the fruits. Hallelujah. But if your character is still the same, if that's fornication, you can't give up. You can't give up TV. You can't give up that Tupac. You can't give up that way. Change yourself. Something is not right in your life. The grace of God has its limit. Do not be stubborn. There are some people sitting here thinking, okay, that's for them. It's for all of us. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, the Lord God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And God, Jesus died on the cross for all of us. So these things that I'm speaking about concerns all of us that we are here. Don't say that, okay, that's Brother Shiko shouting. Amen. But if your eyes are open right now. You will know that it's God that is speaking to you. Do not harden your heart when you hear the word of God. It's an opportunity for you to change. It's an opportunity for you to come out of the life of darkness and be the king that God has called you to be. Hallelujah. God's mercy was revealed in the stirring of the water. Now, listen to this. It says, this man had infirmity for 38 years. Check this. The Bible did not even say the man's name. You see, when a problem overtakes you so much, if your name is erased, you are known as the player, oh, the thief, the drug dealer. Your name is gone. The Bible says that the man who had infirmity for 38 years, but this man had a name, but because his problem, his situation, dominated his life, his name and his identity was gone. And all he was known was the man who had infirmity for 38 years. This man was in a situation where he had no hope. 38 years. Tell me, that sin, that thing that you're not able to give up, how long has it been troubling you? One year? Two years? Even if it takes 100 years, it's not impossible to Jesus. He's able to change that situation. He's able to transform you today. He's able to remove those chains away from you today, right now, even as I'm speaking. Hallelujah. The Bible says 38 years of infirmity. He lost hope. Finances. I'm always in the red. I'm always in debt. Every day I get bills, 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 debts. Debt management company calling me. Bailiffs giving me a call. This man was in a situation where he lost all hope. He had no hope. He did not know where hope will come from. But David said that in my time of trouble and difficulties, where does my hope come from? My hope comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. My hope comes from Jesus. Because he's a merciful God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that that day Jesus was just walking. 
Like today as I'm speaking to you, I believe that Jesus is walking. Amen. The Bible says that he was walking and he was looking. There was loads of people. In the beginning of that verse, the Bible says that there was a multitude of people. It means there was lots of people in the plural. But that day, Jesus' eyes was fixed just on that man. I don't know who Jesus is speaking to today. But I believe that he's here and he's walking. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, your problems, Jesus knows about it. There is nothing that is hidden before God. He knows you. Even the things that you do in darkness that no one knows about. Your pastor does not know. Even your mom and dad does not know. But Jesus is watching you. You cannot lie to your conscience and you certainly cannot lie to Jesus Christ. Because he sees and he knows what you're doing. But nothing is impossible to him. But I thank God because we serve a God of second chances. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our brother said earlier on, a God of second chances. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is giving you a second chance today. Jesus looked every, at everyone that day. But his heart was moved and touched by this man. Now listen to this. Jesus approaches this man with a heart of compassion. He wants to save him. He wants to heal him. He wants to take him out of that situation. Now Jesus asks him a question. says, do you want to be saved? Do you want to be healed? The man, instead of saying yes, the man says, oh, you see, the problem is, Every time I want to get into the water, someone comes before me. There is nobody else that can put me. Hallelujah. That is how we Christians are today. Amen. I'm telling you today, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But some of your sisters today, you think to yourself, but well, you see, Brother Shiva, the thing is, don't worry about the thing is. You just believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. The problem with us, we like reasoning a lot. Hallelujah. Look, faith, I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I just believe. Hallelujah. I see the mountain. I just believe. Hallelujah. I just walk. And I see the mountain just go. Hallelujah. The Bible says that if you have faith as little as a grain of seed. Hallelujah. Not an apple. Not an orange. But a seed. You can move mountains. So whatever your problem is, it can just be gone. Hallelujah. So I'm not moved by all these things. Just believe. Yes. Hallelujah. What are you reasoning? Mm. Oh, there's too many people here. When Brother Shiko will call me, I don't really want to come forward. Forget that. Amen. When it's time for your deliverance, do not look at other people. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because I said to you in the beginning that salvation is individual. Yes. On that day of judgment, these people will not stand and be like, okay, I stop. No, no. It will be you and God giving account of every thought giving account of every decision you've ever taken, giving account of everything you have ever done in your life. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. That day that man began to give arguments. But you see, uh, God, uh, the problem is, I'm not ready to follow Jesus yet. I don't want to follow Jesus whilst I'm still have my girlfriends on the side. You know, I want to finish that life first and then I will follow Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ said, come as you are. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come as you are. The rest it's up to him. You don't worry about it. He knows you. He knows you can't give up those six things that you do in the dark. He knows the problem that you have. He knows the depression that you have. He knows that you are troubling yourself. He knows you can't sleep. He knows that you're crying at night. But all he's saying is come to me. The rest is up to him. Jesus Christ asked this man a question. He wants to be healed. You see what a man was doing? He was focusing on his own limitation. But not focusing on the greatness of God. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. He was not focusing on Jesus. Yeah. A lot of us, we do that. We believe our problems are so big that Jesus can't deal with it. Yeah. But let me tell you, the God that we serve, His name is Almighty. Almighty. He's powerful. Yeah. The Bible says that His name is above all other names. Yeah. So it means all your problems are underneath the feet of Jesus. Yeah. It has no power over Jesus. You just believe. Don't focus on your limitation. Don't think that God is incapable. But God is capable. And is able to change and touch you. And change your situation. In other terms, Jesus Christ was saying to him. Are you seriously ready to be healed? Are you ready? Are you prepared? And that's the question that I'm asking someone here today. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be saved? 
Are you ready to give up that life? Are you ready to hear the calling of God? God has been speaking to you for many weeks, and you know this, but you've been running away from it. But today, the God of second chance is here. And he's saying to you, are you ready? Are you ready to give your life to Christ? Are you ready to follow him? Are you ready to abandon all these things? Are you going to give arguments? Or oh, where you are right now, you're going to stand and come forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The God that we're serving is at work. The God that we're serving is able to do great things. You see, I've come here today not to speak to you in excellence of speech. I'm not here to speak to you about persuasive things or tell you things that will influence you or make your eyes or your ears happy. But I'm here to tell you the truth, which is in Jesus. Hallelujah. It's things that no eyes have seen, no ears have heard. Hallelujah. These are the mysteries that God has hidden for those whom he has chosen. And today God has chosen you. Yes. Special nation. Holy people. Yes. Set aside. Yes. Taken out of the darkness yes. into the light. To declare the praises of his glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to invite my brother.
sometimes it feels like it's, it's too good to be true, right? Sometimes, like, I, I can't be real, right? But um, when our brother stood up, my brother played here and stood up and gave his testimony, and um, everything that he said is true, because I've known him for a very long time, and uh, I'm, very, I'm very proud of you, guess what you've done in your life, how you turn your life around, and uh, we'll give God the glory for what he's doing in your life. As we mentioned, we're coming close to closing our events, but before we go, we had special things planned. Now, we're thinking actually, what can we do to really bless these people? There's a word, there's a testimony, but I thought there's one more thing that we could do to really enrich these people's lives. So, I invite you all to have a look underneath your chairs. Some of you will have a special message underneath your chair. So, everyone, please have a look underneath your chair and check if there's a message there. If there, there is a message there, please get up your seat and come forward. I believe there will be three people. Please have a look underneath your chair. There should be an envelope. Don't open the envelope. Just take it and come forward. Amen? Have a look underneath your chair. There should be one more, right? There should be one more. Have a careful look underneath your chair. I might have checked mine too. Now, to receive the special prize we're giving you, you've got to give us an answer. And this answer has to be something that is special to you. Um, to me, it will be Samson, because um, when he lost everything, and after that lost for women and everything like that, God still gave him the power to do one more great thing. Queens in the house. Amen? <laughs> I 
see our sister in the back, that's standing up, she's ready. <laughs> Amen? Our sister in the back there, since you, you're the first person to stand up, I'll give you the challenge. Can you name us one queen in the Bible and what she means to you and why? One queen. One, one woman. She's a queen. Amen. Yeah.